Welcome back to another episode of It's All Been Trek Before. We're, we're reviewing, we're recapping the entire season two. Is it the best season in Star Trek history? Is it the best season of the original series? We talk about it, at least to this point so far, but you can get in there, weigh in, give a listen, let us know, tweet us, email us, whatever way you have to get at us. Just please don't come running at us on, on the street. Someplace you can run at us with your money to buy tickets. Come see the It's All Been Done Radio Hour. This Saturday, 4.30 at Mad Lab, special time, 4.30. Tickets, not special. You can get at madlab.net slash tickets right now. Go to madlab.net, get those tickets, check out this month audio dramas, audio comedies. It's a little of both. It's a little of everything. It's a lot of fun. It's a good time. Also going on, 7 o'clock, the Columbus Podcast Festival. I mean, he's there too. 7 o'clock at the Garden Theater, Short North Stage, right there in, of all places, the Short North. So check him out twice. Check him out once. Check him out one or the other. Either way, it's a bevy of riches. Summer's coming. And what's coming at you right now is a season two review of It's All Been Trekked Before. Welcome out to a, another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before. Most of your regulars are here. Uh, this is Steven. Keith. And Jimmy Jerome. And today we are talking the classic Star Trek series, season two overall. What did you think? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. Yeah, just... It, End of podcast. Okay. <laughs> Take episode. care, everybody. <laughs> Join us in six weeks for season Live three. long and prosper. Uh, <laughs> you know, the first season had, you know, all the, not only a lot of great episodes, but you're getting introduced to a lot of the concepts and this and that. Um, and then the second episode, oh, second episode, second season, uh, you get to see the them just, it's kind of like, you know, these days with the superhero orig origin movies and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Like, first one has set it all up, and those, that's cool, and then the second one can really expand. And I think it's similar here. Um, I think you're anyway. being generous in <laughs> saying that they were setting up in season one. Well, <laughs> the type of show they were, they only needed an episode or two to set up. Well, but I think some of the things they developed, I should say, yeah, the, the yeah, Kirk, yeah. Spock, uh, McCoy triangle and that kind of stuff. They, um, they kind of figured it out during that. Yeah, origin but. story was overstating it, but I think some of the things yeah. they developed in that first season. So then when you got to season two, you're like, okay, these three are, these three have these relationships and some yeah. of the other little relationships that are certain things we know are going to happen. And so that, I think that's why you get it. We got in a really solid block of episodes. On the other hand, you also get into the more settled in, are we running lazy. out of, are we running out of idea, really yeah. cool new ideas? <laughs> um, and are we getting lazy or running out of time or even more, mm -hmm. more squeezed? Um, yeah. And so there are, as we've discussed, some weaker episodes uh, for one reason or another. Sure. Uh, whether you're Cat Spa or you're, you're uh, <laughs> Planet of the Week or you're- The Immunity Syndrome, Return yeah. to Tomorrow. Ooh. Gamesters of yeah. Triskelion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those were our bottom four. That's why. And we're going to look there. back on those with, with, uh, with, uh, <laughs> wistfully uh, coming up very well, soon. We're going to get into season three. I, I would <laughs> definitely argue that season two is stronger. Um, yeah. When we're looking at both the top and the bottom mm -hmm. of the list, while there are some great episodes in season one, I feel there's a longer list of great episodes in season two. Yeah. And while there are terrible episodes in both seasons, the, the lows of season one for me are much lower than the lows of season your two. Your Charlie X's and your... Charlie X and Alternative Factor and Tomorrow's uh, Yesterday yeah. are all three way worse than anything yeah. we did this season, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Whereas, if we look at season one, yeah, The Cage is great, Aaron and Mercy is great, Where No Man Has Gone Before is great. After that, there's some really good episodes, but those are like the top for me. Whereas season two, we've got Journey to Babel, Mirror Mirror, Trouble Tribbles, Amok Time, Doomsday Machine, I Buzz, I Met Earth... Those are yeah. all, like, really yeah. great episodes. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, I, yeah. Oh, City on the Edge of Forever for season one as well. Cool. Um, but, yeah, I just think the average quality is better in season two. Yeah, and it, like I said, it seems like they they had a lot of stuff figured out, like I said, for good and bad. Like, if they, But I, I agree with you. I think overall the quality is better. They didn't have to, like I said, introduce as many things. Well, a good way to check the quality may be to look at the middle of the road. So the Man yeah. Trap was our middle episode of season oh, wow. one. Um, in rankings, our middle episode of season two was A Private Little War. Mm -hmm. Oh, which there you go. I would say was better yeah. than The Man Trap. Yeah, I would too. So, yeah. yeah, that's another way to rank it. Keith, did you think season two was better or worse? Or Prob the same? Probably better overall. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to mm -hmm. keep them all apart in my head at this point. <laughs> Well, unlike for our listeners, we did not take a break in between. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, any trends that you noticed in season two besides, of course, more McCoy? Yeah, more McCoy. Um, and Chekhov. Yeah. 
Um, no more Rand. No more Rand. No more sexual assault. Some improvement there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there things were as blatantly sexist in season two. No, not as not, bad. I mean, there were certainly they did not moments. end sexism, but yes, yeah. it was there not were as bad. Yeah, they it wasn't it. every episode the way it started. <laughs> and I feel like in some ways we got to see more of the secondary characters early on, and then as the season went on, which was just like season one. Yeah, we yeah, started exactly. early in the season, yeah. seeing more of them, and then. Uh-huh. They... And I don't know if that's a writer thing or I mean Sulu disappeared or George K disappeared because he was doing, doing a movie but um, the Green Bray. yeah but we didn't get nearly enough of Hura well I know I can we can never get enough of Hura but that said still not nearly enough I feel like overall our secondary characters got more to do in season two not a lot more right but I think they got a yeah, little more I think so too did you feel they really became a large core cast this season Whereas in season one, I feel like they had some competition. Yeah. Besides Sulu and Yuhara, we'd see Kyle pop up or right. Riley, Riley or whoever. Yeah, yeah. Those guys. And you weren't, it wasn't always clear who were the regulars. Yeah. Whereas by season two, I felt pretty solid. Yuhara, Scotty, Sulu, when we see them, yeah. they're the ones that keep coming back. Yeah, it, to the point where if they're not there, you're, you're curious why they're, yeah. why they're not there. Like Who's in Sulu's seat? Like when we had your favorite, Uhura's backup. Ugh. White Uhura. Oh, she's the worst. I just love how I can get the same reaction out of you whenever I bring her up. <laughs> What's bad at the moment is I only remember how I felt about her. I can't picture her at all. Yeah. And I don't even, I don't remember anything about her. Maybe that her, says it all. Except right? that I don't like her. Maybe that says it all. Were there, were there fewer godlike beings in this season? I think so. Maybe I, if we, we had a, we had Adonis. We had some, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that was more of a first season pat- rep- repetition. We definitely got into the planets and patterned after Earth thing with uh, patterns of force. And, yes. Uh, that was um, in the back half of the yeah, season. Piece though, of so. the action and um, the end of, uh, uh, not Aaron or Mercy, but the Omega Glory. Well, yeah. Yeah, those three. Which ranked lower for us. <laughs> yeah, and I I think I ended up, I was surprised how much I liked a piece of the action upon going back and watching. Oh, and Brendan's Earth. Yeah. Also had a... Mm. So season one had godlike creatures. Season two had omnipotent clouds in the beginning of the season. Mm. And then... Earth-like, Earth-like planets. planets in the second. We did have a lot of clouds this season. Early on. <laughs> they kind of dissipated. Obsession. Uh, oh. Keith's favorite metamorphosis. Yeah, I know. Keith liked that. <laughs> <It> dissipated. <laughs> <laughs> I knew when I said it, I'd get a reaction. <laughs> Maybe contradictory, but you know the progression of more Spock and, and more McCoy was, I think, a, in a positive way for the most part. Again, I keep talking about the foreboding third season, but those trends will go the wrong way. <laughs> I definitely felt like Spock and McCoy's relationship didn't really develop in season one. Season two was yeah. where that found its yeah. strength. Yeah. Well, what whatever point in season one they decided, oh, this is something to hit on. Yeah. Yeah, it really took off in, in season two. That reminds me, I, I did eventually get to, uh, when I went home, bring up that episode where McCoy and Spock are both in jail mm-hmm. oh. and show it to Marianne. <laughs> that, that, that scene, just the... Oh, yeah. Should have made that, out. Yeah. 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 Was, that, was that Brandon Circus's? I, I, think it, I think it would have had to have been. With all the... the yeah. The, the one that held all the homoerotic imagery? Yeah. imagery? yeah. That, that, it was while Kirk was uh, oh, receiving yeah, his conjugal it, visit. It had Rhodes Reason with the, the, the short shorts and the nice legs. <laughs> So yeah, uh, definitely some good trends. Mm-hmm. What are some of the bad trends we saw in season two? Uh, well, there was like planet thing. I think well, the, yeah. the Earth, Earth similar planets, mm-hmm. um, or, or I guess more specifically, the some somehow adopting Earth culture on the planets. Mm-hmm. Yes, a lot of girls that Kirk used to know, or actually disposable crew people. And by that, I don't mean red shirts. I mean people that pop up for an episode, like Janet Wallace or whatever in mm-hmm. Deadly Years, and then they're never heard from again. Or like um. Oh, uh, uh, Diana Muldar in the, uh, not by any other name, Return to Tomorrow. The, yes. the, you know, we see her, there's this great thing, and then we never see her again. And I know that's the, the nature of episodic television, especially in that era, but mm-hmm. but uh, still, it's a, it, some of them, Janet Wallace, we didn't care for, but... Uh, Which one was Janet Wallace? She was the Deadly Years. She was the one who didn't wear a uniform like everyone else, I feel like. Yeah, mm-hmm. she had her own getup. Hmm. She was an endocrinologist, which came in handy since <laughs> they were all aging. Well, and then they killed... Somebody and he kept came back in the same episode. And right. I saw him a bunch oh, more. Pasky, yeah, yeah. Or uh, Pasky's the actor. I'm trying right. To think, uh, right. Who is Leslie? Leslie. 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 Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, bad. <laughs> just a similar looking officer, you know. They just, yeah. No. 
You can, you know, on, on a ship of that size, you might have a couple people. Who they were quintuplets. Double. Quintuplets. <laughs> is what it, what it they were life model decoys. I mean, they were all Leslie. I mean, they all were yeah. still Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say the in season two we got more humor. I feel like it lightens yes. up in tone. Yeah. Took itself a little less seriously, and I would say that was overall a good trend. Well, that was what was so great about, and you know, I like I said, I think when we did the episode of Piece of the Action, I was like, I don't want, I didn't want that much comedy. I just want, I, I want sci-fi. Let's get to it. But upon rewatching, I enjoyed it a lot more. And then something like Trouble with the Triples is just oh yeah, a great time. And Mirror Mirror had a lot of fun in it. Yeah, and uh, by any other name, we we ended mm-hmm. up enjoying a lot of that. Assignment that Earth, I think of as a fun episode. It, oh yeah, that's a great. That's you know? very fun. Yeah, I'd say a lot of these had fun, more so than season one. Balancing the drama with some... There was some really good sci-fi content as well, though. Mm-hmm. I'm struggling all of a sudden to think <laughs> which episode I should highlight, but there were some really good sci-fi stories. When you mentioned piece of the action, yeah, all I can picture in my head is the mob boss and the woman sitting on the desk, making a call, looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> as, you know, with the, the downward shot and the cameras uh-huh. are like... <laughs> Communicating with the spaceship. I feel like that was way too high, like it is in every room. <laughs> yes, from, from the perspective of yes. the spaceship looking down on them somehow as they're <laughs> talking to them. I think we also uh, got Spock backstory in season two. Yeah. We, uh, we went Mark to his planet, planet, we met his parents, yes. we yeah. met his betrothed. Yes. Um, I mean, most of those were earlier in the season, mm-hmm. but it was season one, we got a little Kirk backstory, we got a little McCoy yeah. backstory. Season two, it was Spock's turn to get mm-hmm. a little development. Mm-hmm. And he got more development, I would argue, than Kirk or McCoy have. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm, again, looking to season three. That there are some better McCoy, or at least a couple of the ones, the ones I like, I can think of, some better McCoy developments. Mm. Actually, it, Kirk, too. There, there are a handful of episodes in season three that that uh, have some nice peaks, like we're talking about, uh, where you learn more about a character. Spock's brain. Uh, that, that is not one of them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I... You know, and I, I think what we'll, we'll see in season three, and some of this was in season two, was Spock, I don't want to say getting more powers, but in some ways getting, he does, uh, or expanding his mind meld and his, mm. the Vulcan nerve pinch is great. And then in season three almost starts to become like a superhero, and Spock's <laughs> brain's a perfect example. Uh-oh. Or not a superhero, but a... Season two is like mind controlling people through walls and stuff. Yes, yeah, so I did not there's a little bit of that. expansion, yeah. I feel like... They didn't follow up on that in the movies or in any no. spinoff series. No. They're like, uh, we probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. They let's not let that be canon. <laughs> I mean it is canon. It is. But I feel like it's something that they abandoned and did not follow up mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. In a good way. Mm-hmm. I wish they had done it in the first place. Yeah. But yeah, they started going that direction and some of that will happen in season three as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, unfortunately. By then Spock was he still is a, he's an icon. So yeah. but of course Kirk is too, but I guess actually, the entire show is iconic. I mean, th- there were so many iconic episodes in season two. Yeah. If we look at it, and most of them are at the top of our list, but when people think of Star Trek, Journey to Babel, Mirror Mirror, Trouble mm-hmm. the Tribbles, Amok Time, yeah. I'm uh, Assignment Earth, those are episodes that frequently come up, a piece of the action. Um, even The Deadly Years is one that I think of as a episode that I... Well, and I don't know when Evil Twins started. I know it became a big thing in soap operas, but yeah. I feel yeah. like I know alternative alternate universes were in sci-fi before Star Trek. But mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sure I feel like a lot of our reference points are well. I think even they, people that don't may not recognize yeah. it. It came from they might see the South Park episode and be like, "Oh man, yeah, South Park did this already." Yeah. It's like it's mirror mirror. I mean, they're they're literally like. We're, we're just taking this from there. I mean, well, the, the fact goatee. that you're... The goatee. Yeah, that's what yeah, I was just going to say. It's always... And Everything steals from Star Trek. A lot of soap operas did it in the in the late 80s, early 90s, went with the evil twin thing. So, I mean, there's that um, that's been copied. But, yeah, a lot of these things are... We say iconic, but they they legitimately are. I mean, yeah. they're things that are they've carried through sci-fi and other, and other forms. You mentioned earlier something about Spock getting more development than, than uh, Kirk McCoy. Mm-hmm. I thought on that was that it's, it's probably because Spock is sort of like their uh, window into into Vulcan. So as they, he has to sort of carry the burden for the story of, you know, as, yeah. as, they, as they decide, oh, we need to flesh this thing out with mm-hmm. with Vulcan society. If we can right. throw this in there, we got to. Well, he's the only Spock alien Bul- crewman, yeah. right. which got a lot of people's attention. Yeah, and people just loved Leonard Nimoy's performance. I would argue he's probably the best actor of the the core. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and, pro- and I guess yeah I think you're right because I, I think as much as a 23rd century person we don't know their backstory but 
Yeah. We know they're from Earth, so we already know yeah. some of their. You can say, oh, uh, you know, McCoy used to have this this love interest once. Right. Yeah. That's one thing. Yeah. So that you know, that, yeah. it doesn't really tell you um, much, but. But yeah, we we. We know what we know Earth at least right now, so we can have some connection. But Vulcan, we don't literally making all that up. Kirk did know somebody knows somebody from somewhere else in every episode. <laughs> um, yeah. Which again, we did. I think we talked about it on one of the maybe it was off podcast, but about you know he was the youngest captain uh, mm-hmm. to run a ship. So I mean, he's got some notoriety. The Klingons know him, mm-hmm. um, so maybe that makes sense. But it is it is convenient. And a lot of his friends die. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dangerous business. Don't get to know Kirk very well. <laughs> In Star Trek, the XO always survives. Yes. That's right. I don't think they've ever killed off an XO. <laughs> In fact, the Deep Space Nine, they ended with the XO becoming captain. So, mm. And in Next Gen, the XO has become a captain in his own right. So yeah, the XOs are, tend to be... In Voyager, the XO started as a captain and then became an XO. So <laughs> well, there's... Yeah. Well, uh, Deep Space Nine is uh, deep to be that. Can't even say it now. <laughs> deep Space Nine <laughs> is ruined for me now. Yep, the whole thing. The whole thing, yeah. because yeah. of that one thing yeah. that you're gonna forget, yeah. and that is not important to the plot at all. It's just like, where did they end up? Little flashes at the end. <laughs> six years from now, when we do those rewatches, yeah, yeah. Oh it'll, God, it'll don't say that. that. Don't say six years from now. <laughs> six years long. from now, we won't be done with Deep Space Nine. <laughs> no. Maybe ten years from now, <laughs> if you remember what I just said. Uh, but yeah, no, the XOs are the XOs are important. I think Spock did a lot to establish what an XO is. Mm. Um, the, his role as the captain's copied on and best friend. Mm. Uh, Kirk is more familiar with his underlings, I feel, than few other captains are down the road. Uh, he doesn't maintain that professional distance, but he still keeps his XO and his doctor mm. closest to him. And that is a different kind of bond than he would have with Uhura or Sulu or Chekhov. Yeah. Um, and because of that, I think that kind of sets the stage of the XO captain relationship later on. Although it makes total sense that if you're going to keep that uh, up high objectivity, you're going to go to your next lowest as the one to bond with. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say season two, we definitely see Kirk and Spock having a deep friendship. Yeah. Which they try to force quickly in season one. But by season two, it feels like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and right off the bat, Muck Time has that, mm-hmm. yeah, that great, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kirk having to, or Spock having to kill Kirk, or quote unquote kill Kirk, and uh, just establishing that bond and just building from there. Um, there are plenty of other great moments. Um, Deadly Years isn't, isn't my favorite, but, you know, Spock having to mm-hmm. explain to Kirk that he's got to yeah. step down and, you know, the pain, it, the way it pains him. And we, we get more into... Pain. <laughs> <laughs> that season one the pain. Uh, I don't know why when I do that, I sound like Dr. Smith on Lost in Space. Uh, <laughs> oh, the pain, oh, deal. Oh, deal. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it, it's, a nice, it's a nice development. And yeah, like I said, th- th- those moments in season three, again, I'm foreshadowing, uh-huh. but you get into there, some of the best moments are those kind of little moments. Um, and whereas in season two, they're nice icing on the cake in season three it's like oh I can at least pull that moment from that episode that's a really nice moment um, to, to, out of not so great an episode maybe it strikes me that season two was more consistent overall mm-hmm. and something I see when I'm looking at the rankings for season one versus season two is season one you know the beginning and the end of the season are at the top of our list mm-hmm. um, but then we've got like the middle all of the season all kind of come in a row and like the beginning of the season are all like to clump together at the bottom. Mm. Whereas if I'm looking at the best episodes of season two, at the top we've got episode 10, 4, 15, 1, 26. You know, it's very spread out. Mm. And at the bottom we've got episode 16, 27. You know, so there's, I felt like overall it wasn't like a run of bad episodes. Mm. They kind of spread out yeah. what was good and what was bad throughout. Season two also brought back our only returning guest character. Yep. Harry mm-hmm. Mudd, Harry Mudd. Uh, which I appreciated getting to see him a second time. Mm. What other characters do you think they should have brought back in season two? Con. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we talked about, we weren't sure if they hadn't decided to bring him back for the movie. Like, he didn't seem all that iconic right. watching the episode. Right. It's funny. Right. So it would have been interesting if they had revisited him. And there would have been, it would have been hard to find a reason to revisit him because his story ended pretty completely. Yeah. Um, revisiting him 20 years later makes total sense. Revisiting him the year after, right. like, hey, everything going good for you? Yeah, it's going fine. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. See you later. <laughs> yeah, our son has a Nova, and it's not supposed to. This is good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, I don't know that there's a story there necessarily. But uh, Q is one, although 
Trillane. you could argue that Trillane, Trillane, sorry, yeah. not cute. Trillane's yeah. one, um, but you could argue that Adonis and some of the other godlike creatures are see, that same that's, thing. But... And see, that's where it bothers me. They do these similar episodes. Mm-hmm. Why not just use the same characters? Yes. I mean, William Campbell came back on the show. It's not like he yeah, for another right. part. Yeah, yeah. So why couldn't we use him instead of yeah, Adonis? That would have been a lot more interesting. And explored that further. Or, I mean, there were definitely other examples. And of course, as soon as I said that, it escapes me. But, you know, some of the love interests, too. Some of the officers that we yeah. got to meet. Yeah. Why don't we see them again? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the Klingon captain. We met a Klingon captain. Why do we yeah. meeting different ones every And time? I think... I can't remember when we did the... I, I know at least once they wanted to bring an X. They wanted to. But then they decided... Yeah. yeah. So then they decided, well, Kirk... All the Klingons know Kirk or whatever. Well, the all the Klingons know Kirk. The explanation is it's a you know it's a big galaxy and a big ship. It is. So it is. Officers get lost in the ship. They're just you know it, off right. doing different things in the corner. And... I mean that <laughs> that makes sense to sure. It does actually. <laughs> but I feel like there was opportunity here right. that went unexplored. That down the road in spinoffs they make up for that. Well, Kirk Sometimes a... it becomes too ridiculous how often the same characters pop up. But... Well, and I think that was our thing with the Deadly Years is like this Jana Wallace character. Like yeah. they have this connection. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it, which is conveniently into the whole, well, you're just into older men thing, which again, hey, Kirk, ease off on that. that there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. But, but then at the end of the episode, when everything's returned to normal, there's, they, there should still be some conflict there. I mean, yeah. that, that should be revisited. And... Well, he started avoiding her. Well, man, yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> he got her transferred to another ship. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. The The first motion picture follows up one of these episodes. Yes. Um, yeah. The Doomsday Machine. Yeah. The motion picture kind of follows that up. Oh, the change second, it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I guess no, both. No, Doomsday. Oh, I was oh, I guess Doomsday both. because of Decker. Oh, yeah. Changeling, Changeling is, is a similar story, but there's yeah. no direct... Oh, right, right, right. right. You're right, right. Um, the second motion picture takes space scene uh-huh. and follows it up. And then after that, the motion pictures kind of find their own yeah. way. But I think it's interesting they chose an episode from season one, an episode from season two. Yeah. They did not make Spock's brain. <laughs> uh, I'm, I have some stuff on that, but I'm going to save it. I'm on that. I, I'm going to save it for when we get to Spock's brain yeah. in six weeks. In six weeks. <laughs> or in an hour. Uh, but in six weeks. In totally, in six weeks. What characters from season two would you have liked to see them return in season three, even though, sorry for spoiling Keith, nobody else comes Aww. back? Like I said, the, Di- the Diana Muldar character, although sure. she will come back. As a different character. The actress will come the back. The actress will yeah. come back. But her character in uh, Return to Tomorrow, I thought was... Mm-hmm. I really liked her. I, I mean, I enjoy her as an actress, too. Sure. I, I know she... Keith really, really would like Zephyr Cochran and, and uh, Merch Hedford <laughs> to come back. Yeah. Actually, well, you know, we, actually we I will would be curious in, but... in revisiting them and seeing how... <laughs> Zephyr Cochran does eventually come back yeah. in the series, but at an earlier point. Not in the original series, but yeah. later in Star Trek. But I honestly... I'm sure he, he regrets it by now. I mean, I would have liked to have seen Sarek and Spock's mother. Oh, Jane. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, Jane Wyatt, yeah. Amanda. I mean, they come back in movies Different and forms. spinoffs, but... As Winona Ryder. Or more recently, um, oh shoot, I it's, can't remember uh, the woman that plays her in Discovery. Oh. They did have Amanda appeared in an episode of Discovery. Oh, cool. Oh, um, awesome. In the second half of the season. Cool. Sarek's in a bunch of episodes yeah, of Discovery. Yeah, yeah. But it's an actress I like. Uh, I thought it was an interesting choice because she did remind me anything of Jane Wyatt Mia Kirshner oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Mia wow. Kirshner oh. plays her now wow um, which I really like Mia Kirshner yeah I've always I kind of wish they'd picked a different character for her to play that's okay I'm just happy to see Mia, Mia Kirshner yeah wow I haven't seen her in a while that, yeah she's, I, she's always good it was just one episode and yeah. it wasn't a lot but it's a good, it's a good would you like to see the cat's paw cat come back yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> those little aliens <laughs> you know as disappointed as we were in the episode the I still love that last shot of those little aliens. Oh my god, that's a great shot. I wish we... That is a great shot. They could have delved more into that. I mean, that I would have liked to revisit those guys. But, and there are a lot of the... I think a lot of the episodes end with, well, I'd love to check back in and see how they're doing later, which is... And maybe it is their way of like, oh, I'd love to do it later, but they only got one more season and they... I would like to see um, the Commodore that was in charge of in, during the Deadly Years that took the... Yeah. Uh, the, I liked uh, him. I can't remember his name. Commodore Stalker. Uh, um, I, he was my favorite Commodore we've seen so far. Gary Seven and um, so that's the top of my list. Those are the ones. Gary that, Seven and yeah. Roberta Lincoln are oh, the I, ones. Yeah, I I want their spinoff. I want them. I still want their spinoff. I want them to make the spinoff now with different actors. I, I'm. I would love to see if, if on a top twenty list of pilots that should have made it that didn't. 
I, I they feel deserve like he's to be go in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, they're the they're number one on my list for who I'd like to revisit. Yeah, as we it's said, it's not a recency episode. bias. I, right, as we said on the episode, yeah. it's like I, I I didn't have a problem just following them and not the others. And we we'd be remiss to leave out Isis the cat. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, the, they're a trio. They're a yeah. package deal. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of would have liked to have seen Daystrom again. Yeah, that was a that was. He was an interesting, interesting character yeah. to me. Yeah. Was he the uh, one who was making the the yard? Ultimate ultimate computer. The ultimate computer. Yeah. 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 I was just thinking about that earlier because I was uh, reading reading a book called Armada. The main character is from his, his first person. He's musing about how uh, he's poking holes in the old sci-fi, mm-hmm. uh, essentially saying, "Why you know why weren't they using drone based battle for a lot of things if they right. were that advanced right. instead of you know putting people, yeah. especially Star Wars? He was yeah. saying why weren't they mm-hmm. putting the best fighter pilots in these things and just doing all this stuff? Well, they were using clones. Oh Star well, Trek. true, true. <laughs> but in Star Trek too, I mean, the ultimate yeah, computer. That, I think that he was on the right track, and they kind of. Yeah. It's a shame that they they approached it in that kind of. Uh, they probably had a, pr- a pretty fearful mindset about advancement back then, about you know, yeah, oh, machines yes. replacing yeah. uh, assembly line workers yes, and things exactly. like that. So they, yeah. that kind of came through in yeah. the writing, unfortunately. But. And I, it makes me think of Guardians of the Galaxy Part Two, which I just mm-hmm. saw, where the you know the the, the golden people. <laughs> Yes. Have those drones. I'm like, that makes total sense. It yeah. makes total oh, sense. Oh, right, yeah. 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 Bloodless War. We Star Trek explores that. Yeah, you're right. right. Taste of Armageddon. Um, I I kind of wish they had let uh, Kalinda go on the ship. That was... And when you first asked sense. about returning characters, I was going to say her selfishly. Selfishly. Yeah. But it would have been interesting to have it a character be. like that join yeah. the crew yeah. and get that mm-hmm. new EB perspective. Mm-hmm. I think in a modern show, that's something I think they right. would do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, certainly, in Voyager, they introduced some aliens in the pilot mm. that joined the crew, and then when they wanted to add a new character partway through, they came across the board yeah. they saved, and yeah. she joined the crew. And that, that to me, is interesting. Mm. Taking that, yeah. bringing that outsider in, if you've got good reason to keep him on the starship, right? Which right. you don't always have, right? Something, something you said earlier raised another question for me. I want to get back to that, but you said. Uh, you were pointing out that there are certain episodes where they left you wanting more, mm-hmm. uh, sort of like the almost like they were, like it might have been like a mini pitch. Leaving the door open, yeah. So yeah. I wonder if, if that has anything to do with the the way that they were using writers back then. Was, was there a, a lot of consistency? Was oh, there, that's true. Or was there yeah. something where they had to like kind of try to get their foot in the door, like, hey, look what I can yeah. do. Maybe we can use this other thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that that makes sense actually. I also really wish Harry might have done a third episode. Of course. Mm-hmm. Well, and. Trouble Tribbles was supposed to be. I know. But. And that would have been fine, but then they would have had to explain how he... I, I, I hate that they negate the ending. I kind of wish I Mud was a third season episode. Yeah. And there was something in between mm-hmm. before they abandoned him with his wife. Yeah. Which was a great ending. His wife is kind of hot in Discovery. Just oh, saying. is that right? Oh, oh okay. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, she's so much younger. Oh, there you go. I'm kind of like, oh, I see you attracted. <laughs> yeah, take that, Kirk. See, it's okay for young ladies to go after slightly older <laughs> men. Or a lot older. Yeah, yeah, she definitely seemed younger than him in Discovery, whereas I'm not sure that Stella seemed all that much younger than him. No, that him. seemed like if, the, if anything, she might have been older. Like we said, that was definitely the stereotypical haranguing wife. Who, yeah. Yeah, oh, God. Or in gotta... Discovery, they more focused on he was trying to use the wife to get at her father's fortune. There you go. Which is another aspect of Harry sure. Mudd I totally buy. Yep. Mm. Rain Wilson's great as Harry Mudd. Cool. Different, definitely a different, more complex yeah. take on him. Uh, you just... Part of me is disappointed you can't just follow up on the characters as they were in mm-hmm. the series. Mm-hmm. And yet I totally understand why if you're going to bring them into Discovery, you need to find other layers. I mean, even Spock's father, Sarek. We're learning things about him in Discovery that they didn't bother to explore in the right. many movies and appearances yeah. he made. Would you say that there's a lot of danger of retconning there? Or, or, or are they just doing I think it? there's some retconning in Discovery, but not a lot. I think it's more just they're trying to, to play within the confines of what they have without spitting the face. Because it is prime universe Star Trek, so they don't want to mess with the continuity. And I would argue there are a couple things they've done, such as the uniforms and the badges that mess with the continuity. Mm. Um, but overall, I think they're doing a good job. Because as we see in the original Star Trek, you don't all have the Delta symbol. That's mm-hmm. just the Enterprise. Whereas in Discovery, they all have the Delta symbol, and that bothers me. Mm. But, and the, they're set like during the time of the cage, but they're wearing uniforms closer to Enterprise yeah. Yeah. than the original series. Which I get, because the original series uniforms kind of hard to make them look cool in the modern day. Right. I mean, even in the 2009 Star Trek, they struggle there. <laughs> um, just yeah. like adding little tiny deltas throughout the right. whole thing right. to make... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to make them look cool now, but... The wraparound shirt, though, 
Always cool. Always cool. Always. <laughs> Always cool. They're timeless. <laughs> uh, let's talk about our favorite and more, least favorite and see if we want to keep the rankings. Yeah. We yeah. ended with Journey to Babel as number one. Okay. Mm. Followed by Mirror Mirror, Trouble of Tribbles, Amok Time, Doomsday Machine. I think, the top five. I think when we discussed it, we felt like Babel was a more complete episode than Mirror Mirror. Even though Mirror Mirror, Mirror was, was fun, but the most fun. It and, had some problems. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I feel pretty comfortable with that ranking yeah. of five. And I would honestly, even though like we focus on the top five, I would say this episode, our season really had a top seven. I would, I'm on Simon Earth, 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 six and seven. Because what's not eight? Is it by any other name eight? Yeah. Which, that's my biggest surprise of Maybe I know. the entire rewatch is how much we like that. But I would say those top... Yeah, I mean, that one's mm. great, but I would say those top seven for mm. me are seven really, really terrific episodes on the level of, if I look back at season one, I'm going to say three or four. What's, like, what's our number five, season one? Uh, A Taste of Terror. Oh, okay. Bounce Terror was number seven. Uh, and that's fine, but Sydney on the Edge of Forever, The Cage, Aaron and Mercy, I agree with that. Then where No Man's Gone Before, that one's pretty good. I know. I, that's I, where it I, starts I, to get That one way. I definitely have my strong, my predisposed notions yeah. kick in for that. It's like, nah, that's a great, I love it. I don't care what, I don't care if The Rock never hit Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then that's why I said three or four. I yeah, think right, argument. right, yeah. But then after that, you're kind of like, those are still good, but yeah. they're not. Whereas this one, I'm like, there's seven that I'm like excited about that I would yeah. watch again right now. Do we want to change rankings? I mean, we, in I season one, we were okay. really a debate, but what was, good? was Amok Time three? What was three? Amok Time was four. Okay. Three is Tribbles. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Babel, Mirror Mirror, Tribbles, Amok Time, Doomsday, Doomsday. I'm on Assignment Earth. Yeah, that's right. if we look at the bottom... Well, that, when we did season one, we said bottom three, because those were, they just had yeah. three unwatchable episodes. Yes. Honestly, I'm trying to remember some of these, but Cat's Paw is the only one that jumps out to me is, I don't really need to watch that again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but bottom... It, learning that it was, and I don't know how well, how I didn't know this before, maybe I knew it and forgot, that it was a Halloween-themed episode. Yeah. Except for the ending, which I agree was excellent. Oh, so the great. ending was it's so, so good. Great. It's like... I wish that had been the ending of a good episode. Oh, yes, what? exactly. The... Cat's Paw. The yeah. little like no, Jim Hansen creatures. Like the big, re- it's like a, it's a great reveal. It and is. It, they were almost like Rocky Horror aliens. Yeah, and it's like, but it, looked like Jim Hansen. The thing creatures. we talk about a lot about, like, oh, all these aliens are humanoid. They're always yeah. humanoid. Yeah. And finally, we get some at the end that once the illusions gotten rid of, there, it's great. But it was a long way to go for that drink of water. It was men in, like Men in Black or something. That yeah. too. Yeah. A little piloting. Mm-hmm. So if we look at bottom five, start bottom up. Cat's paws are, are worse. Yeah. Then Immunity Syndrome, Return to Tomorrow, Gamesters of Triskelion, and Obsession. And honestly, I don't remember much about most of those. Uh, Gamesters I remember decently. Sure, that's... Cat's paw I remember decently. Yeah. Obsession, there was something about Cloud, wasn't there? Yeah, that's <laughs> the one where the, the Cloud that Kurt came yeah. across for a night. Immunity Syndrome was the Amoeba, which was awful. Yeah, that one never... Developed and I, I I remembered obsession better before we watched again. It's like no, okay, I remember. Return to tomorrow. I have to like look. That's the up the to find. I That's, know it's another advanced civilization thing. And yeah, I don't even remember what it was. The evil one, Spock, and yeah. Again, enjoy Diana Muldaur. <laughs> She's gonna be back, I think, in a better episode. Oh yeah, in the I, that one of the better episodes of season three. I, if yeah, I, yeah, I think so. So yeah, I don't. Which is funny. Because there aren't many things you could say were better in season three <laughs> there are, than in earlier one. seasons, but Dana Muller was better in season three. There's that one. Than in earlier. Yeah, it's going to be a, an oasis in a desert when we hit those moments. <laughs> so looking at men women, Steven, your longest held this, yeah, this was, season uh, was Marlena. Yeah. What was mine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the middle cat's polish. No, just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, Merge had who you kept since episode way early on. My longest was a four way, or yeah, four way tie. I had four different women I kept for four episodes. So I He's was, not the loyalist that Keith and I are. I mean, I did the, pra- I did the Valiant that discovered sex, Yoga okay. Tegris, and Kalinda. Hey, those are all four, four that worthy choices. for a while. But just because they were your longest tell doesn't mean they're the one you get to pick at the end. Last, when we did season one, yeah. it wasn't always the longest tell. I mean, I think Yellow Feather Showgirl was like my yeah, longest. Yeah, she hung, she hung in there. Yeah. Uh, so, who do you want to make your woman of the season? This is recency bias of a different kind, meaning in the actual this universe, Terry Garr's been in my life longer and I've loved her longer. 
So yeah, I'm I'm picking Roberta her, Lincoln. Roberta Lincoln. Even though excellent choice. Yeah, I mean Marlene, you can't go wrong with the, the captain's girl, but excellent choice. Yeah, Keith. <laughs> well, I mean, for comic effect, I would love to just like pick somebody random, but no, uh, let's go with Hedford for now. For now, this is your last <laughs> chance. This is your last chance to escape her this season. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke, nobody yes. gets. Uh, you are wearing your world, life's an inside joke. That's true. The world's inside joke. Oh, yeah. T-shirt. This is, <laughs> I don't know what they call, is this is, is this space Stockholm syndrome? That yeah. Keith is, is <laughs> now, as the season played out, I really thought that you were sticking to Birch Hedford as a long-running joke. That your love for these types of things <laughs> overrode your desire to pick a new woman. Am I correct in that? Perhaps. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you admit it on tape for the audience uh, that you were tempted throughout the season to switch. That's the way that life works, though, isn't it? And that does, <laughs> don't, don't hit us with the insightful stuff. <laughs> that does make me think of, like, that would have been, like, a future episode I would like to have seen was what happened to Merge Hedgeford's actual family. Because uh, she's dying, and then she merges with this cloud, but... How does the rest of her family feel? Although she does say she didn't pay enough attention to him, but those are like, and maybe somebody's done a novelization or a story on it, but those are some of the B stories. It isn't the right term, but uh, <laughs> expanded universe is actually probably a better term. Of, I'd love to see those those offshoot stories like that. Um, what happens after the Enterprise zooms off? Yeah, you know what's going on on the piece of action planet. Those are some of the more interesting novels and stuff. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm really torn on who my woman of the season should be, honestly. So many good choices. I'm going to go with Yeoman Tancris. That's a good she, choice. She was awesome. She was, I mean, I, I like Roberta Lincoln a lot, but I, what appeals to me about Yeoman Tancris, she's like, first of all, she's an officer. She's got mm. her crap together. She's serving on the ship. She seems capable and intelligent. Kalinda's hot with her Sansa Stark look, but... <laughs> She, it could be tiring to try to teach somebody a whole to culture. explain everything to her, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Though Isis the Cat as a woman is also right up she there. She is, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with Yemen Tankris. She seems right. a substantive and beautiful choice. She got her sass across in very few lines and just a couple looks. So I, she's, she's very worthy. Tough decision, though. There were a yeah. lot of good choices in season two. And the actress who did Tankris, she's still, she's still acting now, so. Yeah. I see a recent picture of her when I Google. Any final thoughts on season two overall? I know this is a shorter episode, and I think that's fine. Just because this was a good season. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a lot to complain about like we did with others. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is. We will look back fondly <laughs> in season three. I know I've been beating that drum for these first two seasons of rewatching, but... Oh, we were going to rank the seasons. We agree oh. season two ranks better than season one? Yeah, I think I think so. I think this is the best it, of original series overall. It's definitely between one and two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about that. yeah, I think I'd give two the nod. I think I'll, I'll go along with that. It's just more consistent, as well as has, has more iconic, excellent episodes. I mean, there's no Miri, but... There is no Miri, thank God. There's no Charlie X. <laughs> <laughs> Miri ended up ranking middle of the pack. It did. I, uh, I think well, it, a little lower than the middle, but still. Higher than I thought it would be. Let me say this. There's no return to tomorrow. Uh, not return to tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's yesterday. Oh, God. It's hmm. absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Nothing this season. And even the worst, the, 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 even the, I'd say, I'd say Cat's Ball was still more interesting than Alternative Factor, which oh, absolutely. disappoints me. Absolutely. Because in my mind, I really thought that was. I like Cat's Ball better than Charlie X. I'll yeah. say it right now. Yeah. Wow. I am not e- even certain if I would rank Cat's Ball above or below Mud's Women. I might. Give Cat's Paw an edge over Mud's Women. Wow. I might go four, four up from season one. Because <laughs> I, yeah, I really hated Mud's Women, despite Harry Mud. Well, when we get, maybe down the line, we'll have an NCAA tournament style <laughs> bracket of all 78 episodes. I don't think you can do that. I'll you do that. I will come up with it. You make the bracket and we'll debate it. I will come up with it. Okay. Yeah. And you put similar episodes in the same brackets to. Yeah, it'll yeah. have to be, yeah, some kind of. It's uh, going to take a lot of thought. I will have to rank the episodes 1 to 78, so they're seated 1 to 78. (laughs) But you have fun with that. I will send you our rankings to get started on. As I think I mentioned early on, at one point I had all 78 original episodes uh, ranked in order. 
I'm by happy, how much I liked them, but I don't know where it is now. I'm happy to debate them with you. If you ever find that, I would love to post that, it. Those could be, those could be little mini sows, little five minute, but four yeah, minutes. Yeah, I, I don't have the time to go through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once we get through the season three, I'll, I'll do that. So maybe for March Madness 2019. 19. Yeah, we'll be doing season three. Mark your now. calendars. So we'll be back in six weeks, yep. uh, late June. We may have a bonus episode or two released whoop, whoop, between bonus. now and then. Um, I guarantee we have at least one bonus episode <laughs> between now and then. But we'll be back uh, in about six weeks. So enjoy your hiatus. Yeah, keep and, living long and prospering. And uh, we will. I'm, I'm very. I will understand if you don't want to come back with us, but we <laughs> hope that you will. <laughs> it's. We can share the pain, and laugh through it, and fight through it. And you don't want to miss all of Keith's inside by, jokes by, by the way, time it's next gen. That's right. By, you can share the pain with right. us. Yeah. <laughs> and once we get through season three, hey, the movies the are coming series. up. Then we get the anime and series. True, but then the movies are coming Then the movies. Yeah. And then the first season of next gen's pretty Yeah, good. I'm looking toward it. I'm, I'm looking forward to rediscovering TNG. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you soon. Uh, enjoy your break. 